Okay, we. Okay, I'll put the timer up. So.
If anybody wants to uh, submit their paper, just put your hand up. Okay, guys, time's up, uh, but if anybody wants uh, extra time, I can give you an extra minute or so to finish off whatever you're doing. Um, in the middle, I had given some extra extra time. I had extended the time. Okay, so I'll just give one more minute. If anybody wants to... Right, just put your hand up for collection. Put your hand up for your script collection. I don't believe anybody came late. Um, if they have the script collection, yeah, just put your hand up if you want to get your script collected. So this is your answer? The tongue one? Okay. Yep, yeah, we'll come. We'll discuss the solution shortly and we'll talk about the project and we'll talk about your final exam paper. So okay. Anybody on this side? Uh, sort of come to that side, collect your paper. Okay, let's pass it here. Right, so we'll be discussing the solution for this. We'll be talking about your project. We'll be talking about your final exam paper, all right? So those are the three things. Let me just collect from here. Okay. All right. Guys, anybody still with the paper? You can still with the paper. 
Yeah, ready? Anybody still with the paper on this side? Anyone? I can give you extra time if you want. Just have to put your hand up. So everyone's script, I've got everyone's script. Okay, let's discuss the uh, final exam and the uh, solutions. <coughs> okay, so there's three things to discuss. Actually, uh, you know, uh, due to COVID this year, what has happened is um, we have reduced the size of the semester to 13 weeks, and that sort of affected, uh, so even though COVID was last year, I mean, COVID really impacted Fiji last year, but this year we are paying, we are still paying for it in terms of, for example, a lot of you, almost all of you did first year online. So you missed out like a face-to-face -face interaction. I don't know what you find better, whether the f online lectures were good or whether the face-to-face -face one was good, all right? Uh, so, so some of you came uh, sort of unprepared into the course, um, you know, uh, not, what I found was uh, students were not ready for the routine of university. So because you did first year online, second year you did face to face, there's a particular routine. And there's a way of attending lectures, taking notes, you know, whatever the lecture says, lecture says, noting down the important points and so forth. So uh, this year we came down to 13 weeks. That's another side effect. And uh, as a result, there's some small content which was missed out, we couldn't cover. So no worries, I'm not giving you whatever. We're only going to cover up till whatever was in quiz number five, right? So whatever you've covered up till quiz number five, that's, that's it. So yesterday's lecture was pretty much the last proper lecture, all right? Okay, so the first thing I want to discuss uh, uh, is uh, before I do the solutions, uh, I want to talk about your project. Uh, and what will be the sequence of your, how we will be marking your project. All right. Now, um, I sent this email out uh, just this afternoon. I'll just read it out to you guys so you can spread it to your, to your fellow, fellow um, classmates uh, if they haven't attended the lecture, right? Um, okay, number one. Project will be assessed in week 13. We already know that. We read week, week 13. And we must complete all your assessments by 5 p.m., right? Unless, and I haven't written that there, unless you've got a genuine illness or some, some issue comes up and uh, I'm say, talking about there's a death in the family or, or something like that. You know, something serious happens or, uh, you know, you, you yourself are not feeling well, then obviously you let me know by email and we will reschedule your assessment to study week, you know, your demonstration. When I say assessment, I mean your demonstration. We'll, we'll reschedule it to study week or whatever it is, whatever required, right? Or during the exams, uh, not the, you know, during the gaps between the exams or something like that. Because you have, I believe you have four papers to sit. Yeah, you have four papers to sit. So obviously the exams are spread over two weeks. So there will be gaps during the exam. You'll have one paper on one day and then you might have one gap and then another paper on another day. So if you have an issue, please email me. Make sure you email me and let me know, all right? Don't just... Uh, uh, Viber message me or, or call me, okay? Please make sure you email me. Now, um, um, we will start at 9 o'clock. We will finish at 12. That's for round one. Then we will again restart at 1.30. We'll have a one and a half hour lunch break. We'll again start at 1.30, <coughs> finish at 5, right? So that's about six and a half hours, and I'll be the only one marking for consistency, all right? Um, there's an assessment schedule, all right. So let's have a look at the schedule, guys. There's an assessment schedule. If you come here in your project section, there's an assessment schedule, right? So, or what, what I call a demonstration schedule. Did I use the word demonstration schedule? All right, demonstration schedule. All right, so this is your demonstration schedule. All right, okay. So, all right, who's number one? Oh, you? Okay, very nice. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, don't worry. Um, you see, <clears throat> so Friday, 9 o'clock till 12 o'clock, there's 31 st students scheduled. So what I'll do is, when I go to the lab, I'll say, number one, Mr. Gosai, right? 
So he has to come up in the meantime. Number two has to be ready. All right, number two has to be ready. Um, let's let's say, for example, um, because it's a big job. I have to process 67 students tomorrow, right? And those problems are big problems. We have to go through each and every cycle. Now, um, what I want to mention is um, the right. Any of you got problem one working fully functional? Problem one fully functional. All right. So at that point in time, let's say you've got problem one fully functional. You will be asked. Because it's fully functional, there's no flaws. It's working as per the specifications. So you just go to the tutor, right, the TA, Mr. Krish Raj, and he will mark you and he will give you full marks if it is fully functional. The moment you get something which is partially functional, he will, he will check your work, of course, to, to verify. Because marking a fully functional machine is very fast. Right? Something which is full marks will work perfectly. You don't have to show, oh, it works till here, then it gets stuck here, then it jumps to here, and it goes to, into an unused state, and then stuck in the unused state, right? No, uh, fully functional would be very fast marking. So you, if you have a problem number one is fully functional, you take it to him, he'll mark your problem number one, he'll give you full mark for problem number one. Then uh, let's say your problem two is partially working, right? Something is working, something is not, or oh, it's totally, you've got something there, you've got your calculations there, all your Kano maps and everything is ready, but for some reason it's not working, then you come to me and I'll do partial marking. So my marking will take time because I've got to mark all the guys where it's not fully functional, right? Okay, so let us say if you have problem two, problem one partially working and problem two half working, right? So uh, problem two, you come to me, problem one, you go to Krish. Then we'll both be there in the lab, all right? So just to prevent overcrowding, I've split the class into two. Uh, 31 students will go in the morning, and another, obviously, there will be 36 students will go in the afternoon. But if you'll note that the afternoon session goes for three and a half hours, all right? And if you have an issue, if you have an issue, let's say, okay, firstly, I know there shouldn't be an issue because 22 out of these, the first 22 students in the morning session are from the Friday morning lab. And the guys in the afternoon session are in the Friday afternoon lab. So I know there are fixed times for those two. It's only the guys who are doing the Monday lab. The Monday group who I have spread between morning and afternoon, all right? And you can come and see me uh, in the morning and just let me know that you are coming in the afternoon, right? Obviously, I will be available all the way till five o'clock if let's say, um, for whatever reason, you, you, you had to miss uh, the morning and you want to reschedule to the afternoon, just let me know and you come back in the afternoon, right? But make sure that you get assessed by five. Doesn't mean, and when you come and see me and let me know that you want to reschedule to afternoon, I will say, okay, you are number so and so, come after number 32, I'll slot you in between number 32 and 33. So you're like number 32 and a half, all right? Okay, <laughs> all right, so. Okay, so we'll, so we'll slot you in and you come in at that time, okay? Right, so if you, especially for the Monday guys, because Monday I don't know where they would fit in, whether they fit in in the morning or fit in in the afternoon, so I split them into half and half. There's 20, 20 students in the Monday group, so 10 went to the morning session, 10 went into the afternoon session, all right? Altogether we have about 67 students, right? 22 from Friday to morning, 22 from Friday afternoon, and you'll see the progress will go very fast. And it, it is possible that you can get one problem marked and another problem marked like 10 minutes later, right? While I'm marking somebody else's problem one, coming back to you. So we'll, we'll shuffle everything in. In the past, this year we've only got 67 students. Uh, I give exactly the same project every year, right? I give exactly the same project every year. Simply because that students can work together, they can get coaching from their senior students, and in the end, they still have to do the hard yards, right? You can be coached by one of the senior students, unless the senior student does it for you, which is a different story, but you still have to do the hard yards, all right? You still have to do the, your state diagram, your state table, you have to, they can give you the step by step, but your senior, let's say your, your friend or your flatmate who's in fourth year, he says, yes, I did the same project, but 
he would have had a different combination, right? And your combination different. So you still have to go through the, the whole process, right? So just to see, how many guys, uh, problem one, fully functional? Fully functional. Okay, fair, fair number, all right, fair number. And problem two, anybody been able to crack problem two? All right, nice, very good, very good. Okay, all right, guys. So um, let's just read out whatever was there. So you, the project demonstrator is attached. If you have a problem with your tensor, please email me, right? If you have some, please email me, or please, uh, please uh, make sure you see me in the morning so that I can give you a SWOT number, all right? Okay, so I'll give you a SWOT number, so I'll say, okay, I'm moving you to the afternoon. You're 33 and one third, and you know, okay. Uh, project report, I've moved that to Monday, all right? So just to get some, just to give you some, some free time, uh, I've given you time to do your project report till Monday evening, okay? Monday evening, right? Um, right, you've got to turn up, basically. You've got to get it assessed. If I call your name, you don't turn up, right? And you don't come and say, excuse me, sir, can you move me to the afternoon? Or can, I, can, can you just put me later on? Right? If you don't turn up, if you're a no-show at all, then you get a zero, right? It's better for you to come and reschedule rather than getting a no-show, right? So there's always students who, there's always uh, students who do, don't do the uh, project. They quit the project in the last minute. Why? Because they're starting tonight, right? Anybody starting tonight or started today? Okay, you guys are okay. Because obviously there's some empty seats here who, uh, they, you know, they, and they haven't, haven't started today. Uh, guys, um, yeah, just to let you know, in the past, this year the number is 67, right? In the past, I think tells used to be easier or something along those lines. There was one time when there was 96 students in E222, and we did it in one day. We assessed everybody in one day, all right? So just to, just to give you, get you, let you know that there will be time. There will be time. We'll cut through everybody, okay? Um, and remember, by 5 p.m., and even if it extends into 6 p.m., uh, no issues there. And if you are... Um, yeah, if you're sick or some genuine problem, let me know, all right? Or even if you were, yeah, if there's a family issue or whatever it is, let me know so that we can reschedule, all right? There's no way you're going to copy in this assignment. Um, okay, um, let's talk about the quiz. So let's talk about the quiz. Let's do the quiz. Quiz five, all right, quiz five. And then after this, I'll give you a description of the final exam paper, all right? Okay. All right, so. Uh, this is a sequential logic problem. It says, design, what is the first thing you notice is different between this week's quiz and last week's quiz? It's a more machine, right? So firstly, it's a more machine. Now, what's the deal with the more machine? You have one state dedicated, you have one state dedicated to producing the output, okay? So we don't know what the state number is there, but you know, we'll, 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 we'll have that shortly. All right, now, you've got zero, zero, one, zero, and you've got triple zero, one, either of these two, either of these two, all right? Zero, zero, one, zero, or triple zero, one. So it's a double combination. So by now, this would be helping you with your project as well. And by the time you've done your project, does it make you feel confident about sequence generators and sequence counters? Because you've done it now, such a big problem that you should be really confident now, eh? Oh, sorry, man. I, I just want to mention one more, one more item. Um, I've mentioned this already in the lecture, but just in case you have missed out, there was an error over here in problem two. Small error. For problem two, Specification four or five, you can choose one of them. Because you can't have something which is allowing overlapping sequences. Nor can you have 
something which resets after receiving a sequence. So you have to choose one of them, all right? And the one we will mark it as correct. Okay, so you can obviously, so one student came to me, he was one of the first ones to finish, and he said, hey, you can't have both, right? So that was good, so we caught on to that. So it's either one or the other. All right. Okay. Um, so let's draw our analysis table. State. Um, past input string, or sometimes um, they call it the receiving input. And we can call this X. Current, oh, sorry, guys, not X. X is here. Current input bit, which is X, right? So it will be either 0 or 1, right? OK. Then you have the current input string. So that was passed. This is current. What else, guys? What's next? Next state, system output, let's call it Y. Yeah, it's supposed to be called Y. Yeah, that's it. Okay, now let's start off with A. We really don't know, we really don't know how many states will there be, right? So let's just put this down over here. We want to look at 0, 0, 1, 0, or triple zero, 1. Okay, pass input string in the first round, this is blank. First bit, nothing happens, right? Now. We can either have a zero or a one, right, as the current input bit. Right, from here we now start populating our table. So what I'll do is I'll, I really don't know how many states will there be. Because this has got two sequences, yeah? This has got two sequences. All right, now. Now the current input string, blank with zero will be zero, blank with one is one. So the current input string, this is get, gets loaded, once it's loaded, it's there, right? Okay, so because the previous, uh, I mean the previous uh, receiving input was, was blank, so blank together with zero gives you a zero. Now, let's look at zero. Will zero qualify us into the next round? Yes, because the first bit for both sides is zero. So zero qualifies us into the next state. Obviously, we can't have, we can't have output of one until we have at least four bits. Four bits where? In our current input string. So we're going to have zero for a while. We know that, right? At least until the first four. And one is out. So because it is out, we stay at one, right? We stay at A. Okay, let's move to B. What qualified, guys? Zero qualified. So now our current input string, that gets loaded, that becomes zero, zero. This becomes what? Sorry? Zero, one. All right, now, zero, zero, let's go check it out. Zero, zero, yeah, does it go in? Yes, it's in. What about zero, one? It's out. So because that's in, so it goes to C, and zero, one is out. Let's now look at the two bits, zero, one. Is there anything zero, 01 over here? No. Is there anything 1 over here? No. So we say we go back to A. A is reset, right? Reset. We call it reset or back to start or something, right? <coughs> okay, now C. C was 0, 0. All right, now what will come here if we combine this with 0? What do we get, guys? Zero, 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 and what do we get over here? 
zero zero one or do we get uh, one zero zero? Zero zero? One. All right. Now. All right, zero, zero, one. Now, let's check this out. Triple zero, is there a triple zero in our sequence? Yes, that qualifies. Zero, zero, one, is there a triple zero, zero, one in our sequence? Yes, both of them qualify. So what are the next two possible states? They D and E, all right? So let's put D, right, and let's put E. So we, have, we bring D down, what's D? It was triple zero, what's E? Zero, zero, one. Let me clean this up slightly. We okay, now, what happens when triple zero combines with a zero? What do we get? Four zeros? What do we get when we have triple zero combining with a one? Triple zero, one. Okay, let's now, and let's just fill this side up. What do we have when we have double zero, one combining with a zero? Zero, zero, one, zero, and what about this side? Zero, zero, one, one. All right, now, four zeros. Anything there with four zeros, guys? No, out. Okay, what about triple zero one? Yes. What about zero zero one zero? Yes. What about zero zero double one? No. All right, now, what machine are we building here? More. So for more, we have to dedicate, dedicate one entire state in order to handle the output of one. So that output would be F, right? That output would be F. So because this guy has scored, we get a one, F one, yeah? Okay, what about this guy? That also goes to F one, output of one, all right? Uh, hang on, no. They're a different sequence, different sequence, yes. You can't have both of them, triple zero, one, and both pointing to F. In fact, you could, because the idea is to output a one. So both of these will work. Both of them will work. This is an interesting problem. You can do this. What's the qualifier over here? triple zero one or zero zero one zero, right? So this guy we say we'll call it G, all right, okay? Now let's deal with these guys here. The three zeros, can we recycle four zeros? No, can we recycle three zeros? Yes, we'll call it two, D, output zero. Can we recycle double zero, double one? No, can we recycle Zero double one, no. Can we recycle double one? No. Single one, no. So we go back to A. Right, now. For now, I don't want to confuse you too much. I don't want to confuse you too much, but I'll, I'll, I'll speak about that a bit later, right? Um, okay, what do we get over here, guys? Triple zero one zero triple zero one one, right? Obviously, obviously, uh, none of them meet the requirement, right? None of them meet the requirement. So, output will be zero now. We've got our two ones, right? Output will be uh, zero now. What do we? What can we say, guys? Can can we use the five bits over here? Can we use zero zero one zero anywhere? No. Yeah, there's nothing in the back. What about, um, can we use um, zero, one, zero? Is that usable? No. Can we use the one, zero? No. Can we use this, the plain zero? Yes, we'll just go to B. What about these guys here? Zero, zero, double one, no. Zero, double one, no. 
Can we use just the plain one? No, so it goes to A. Now over here, you have 0, 0, 0001 double zero, 0, 0, 0001. Right, 0, 0, 0001 double zero. What do we get, guys? Where can we go? Yeah, the last two double zeros can go to C. 101, nothing, just A. Yeah? All right, now, this would be an easier solution, right? So that solution, by the way, I haven't drawn the state diagram. But what I'm trying to say here, what was the purpose? I just want to get you thinking. So for the purpose of our studies, we will accept this. This is acceptable. It will, it will, it will form the right answer. But if you want to go really, remember, what is one of the objectives of our design? What we always want to do? Minimize. We want to minimize. So because that's one topic which we haven't covered yet, if you think about it, what was the purpose? What was the purpose of state F? It's only to show an output of one, not to recycle or whatever, right? So you can point both of these guys to one. Because the whole idea of F was to cater for an output of one. It wasn't so much to handle some bit sequence because all the bit sequencing gets done earlier on, right? So you can go without the G and stop at F, right? You can go without the G and stop at F. So th that's what I'm trying to say. But both answers are, are accepted if anybody got that far. Let's just draw the diagram. Oh, let's just answer this. Guys, how many flip-flops will be required to build the system of question one? So let's count. Let's count, guys. How, how many? Um, how many flip-flops, okay? So how many states? Number of states is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 